All right, first up, and it's barely news. We have Joby Aviation, uh, who is making a big old pledge. And this is the first thing we've seen like this for eVTOL. If you don't know, eVTOL is electric vertical takeoff and landing. So basically a big drone that can mm -hmm. transmit transfer to plane mode, you know, and fly with more efficiency than a drone could. Um, that's the idea behind VTOL uh, and eVTOL. Uh, this is um, essentially a promise and uh, working with the city of Dayton to build a $500 million manufacturing plant for VTOL in Dayton. Um, and they're talking about supporting that with $325 million in state and local incentive, incentives. Um, 2,000 jobs would be created from this. 140-acre site, 500 aircraft a year. Um, we haven't seen anything like this yet with AAM eVTOL at all. We've seen just small-scale stuff, a couple of people building a couple units, showing it off, uh, doing bespoke builds where you order it you know, years ahead of time, you know, things like that. We haven't seen anything like this. Um, now, I will say no ground has been broken. Ground is planned to be broken next year. I don't think anybody's actually on the hook for the contract, but the city got up with him and made an announcement. So it seems like... Somebody you know, thinks they're, they're, it's real. They're they're rolling forward with this is, is what it looks like, yeah. Uh cool. Very cool. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see uh, how that all works out. Especially because this right. isn't one of the EV tolls that we've really seen so far. This seems like a new EV toll in the market. So. Yeah. I mean they the city could be announcing it just because they want to hold them to it. And they That's think true. if they make public pressure, yeah. Yeah. Um, Battery-free origami micro flyers take flight. Yeah, this is a neat origami. little story. Obviously, obviously, this is it's barely news, but um, if you skip forward a little bit, you'll kind of get an idea of what's going on. We've looked before at little drones that are sort of like um, uh, like seed leaves uh, that like where the leaf will fall, you know, and it can mm -hmm. kind of be controlled mm -hmm. with the movement of the uh, of the material and this is mm -hmm. kind of doing that where uh these are powered by solar power and they're little chips on this flexible membrane and then they can use that solar power to orient themselves in flight uh which is really just a sustained hover in a wind uh in a wind tunnel so that's kind of neat and i thought it was kind of cool is it like it's sort of bending the little flaps to change how the air flows over it and hold itself believe... in place Yes, I believe that's the case. Yeah, it's just slightly doing little uh, bends with. Uh, I'm not sure if it's like some. I'm not sure what the actuation situation is. Wow. But, uh, yeah, there, there it is. It's like a big actuator in the middle that pushes and pulls on the little. Wow. Hinges. Yeah. Huh. <gasps> that's that's freaky. That's really cool. I can't imagine like what the intended purpose is of it, but it'll probably just be used to kill people soon. <laughs> no, too dark. Poison delivery system. Yeah. Right, little poison darts falling. Yeah, obviously. All right, well. All right. Very, very Last cool. but not least, you might have had gyro issues on your quad, but I bet it was less of a deal than it was. It might have been more of a deal, actually, because they planned ahead on the Ingenuity from Mars. Uh, we've seen a lot of flights go through. Um, in fact, 53 flights went uh, pretty well. I think they maybe landed a couple early. None of them really had any major failures. Uh, or Sorry, 52, but yeah. So 53, the flight 53 was expected to be 136 a second mission. Instead, it uh, executed the first half of its autonomous journey. If you don't know, this is the drone that's on Mars we've covered many times. Mm -hmm. That's still flying on Mars. Uh, we just have to say that again. Um, mm -hmm. It had to stop halfway through its, uh, its, its flight. And this is the first time they've ever triggered the land now contingency. And so basically <laughs> it got it got confused because its IMU data did not match what it saw on the ground. It thought it was in a different orientation in the gyro when it mm -hmm. saw from the camera and couldn't correct it. So it just it just went into land now mode and landed right where it was, which is what they plan they put in there. How is it able to land it if its gyro data was all messed up? Because it can still use like it can still, you know, work its way down and mm -hmm. you there's like confidence levels I guess it has on each of the the images and the gyro, it was able to get down to the ground instead of doing forward flight. Um, and then another flight after worked okay. So um, it seems like this was a, uh, yeah, this was kind of taken care of. This was a problem for like flight six way early on, but they patched it and it was working okay otherwise. Maybe you changed filtering, who knows what actually happened there, right? But 
um, yeah, so it's kind of interesting to know that even on Mars they have IME problems. All right, well, you send a drone to Mars, I guess you expect some problems. Uh, we yeah, just got a super chat. Not to be flying after a year and a yeah. half or however long it's been. <laughs> yeah, are you stop, stop. You guys are, you guys are over delivering. Uh, yeah. You know, no, it's they're going to start. Uh, they're going to start reducing the specs on these things because they're it's lasting been, so much longer than planned. Two. It's been over two years. This thing's been on Mars flying. I don't. I barely have any drones that are. I actually have a couple drones that are more than two years old. I don't know if they still fly wow. though. 